Within our universe, we see patterns of a beautiful symmetry, both in nature and in mathematics. The same basic method of pattern formation can be seen in all living systems and non-living ones. Nature symmetry can be found on every level of creation, from spiral galaxies to seashells, from the rings of Saturn to living cells. There has to be a general principle underlying such universal symmetry. Could the imperfect symmetry that we observe in nature just be the broken traces of a far greater universal symmetry of our universe? In quantum atom theory, this universal symmetry is the geometry of time itself, creating Einstein's curvature of space-time at the quantum level of the atoms. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, every atom is radiating electromagnetic radiation continuously in a process called stimulated emissions. Each atom will radiate out light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Each expanding wave front will create a probability of a future event. When a wave front comes in contact with another atom, the wave particle duality of the light will collapse. This will create a new quantum particle in space and a new moment in time that will be part of the curvature of space-time. The wave function in quantum physics represents the time continuum at the most fundamental level. The probability of the uncertainty principle is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. Einstein was right and something is missing from conventional quantum mechanics. It is a fundamental understanding of time. Atoms create their own space-time this is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, the wave particle duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time. The best way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. The light will expand in all possible directions as a wave particle function of quantized wave fronts. When the wave function reaches the screen with the two slits, the photon will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes going through both slits as two light spheres of quantized wave fronts. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments in time and quantum particles in space in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on the detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. This is because to observe the photon, we have to create a photon-electron coupling, collapsing each wave front into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling, and in time, the interference pattern will reform. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. However insane this theory sounds, it can explain all the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. We have entanglement because the polarization will be set at the creation of each expanding wave front. The wave front will expand as a quantum wave particle function in the form of a light sphere and the polarization will remain the same for the entire surface of the light sphere, no matter how large it becomes. Each wave front will be quantized at the level of the Planck constant, and will collapse into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in time and space that never existed before the wave function collapsed. Because each atom is creating its own space-time at the same rate that light moves, the expanding wave function of light between the at atoms will always be a universal constant, independent of the motion of the source. 
This can also explain why light is so beautiful when it strikes an object. It is because we are looking at a moment of pure creation of time and space. When the wave front of two spheres comes in contact, we will have destructive interference and the wave fronts out of phase will cancel each other out. There will also be constructive interference between the wave fronts that are in phase and they will superimpose or amplify. The radiating energy will be entirely absorbed proportionally to the masses within the objects. This will cause an unbalanced force and the two objects will resonate together in a process known as gravity. Because atoms consist mostly of empty space, electromagnetic radiation of short wavelengths, like X-rays, can penetrate the object and therefore every single part of matter can take part in the gravitational interaction. Therefore the greater the mass of atoms, the stronger the gravitational force. The gravitational field will propagate at the same speed that electromagnetic radiation moves, the speed of light. Therefore there is no instantaneous action at a distance. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Therefore we have a universal dynamically evolving geometry of time in the form of ever-expanding spherical quantized wave fronts. The observer will feel this as the forward momentum of time and will see patterns of a beautiful symmetry not just because of their mathematical position in space but also because of their sequence in time. The atoms will distort the geometry of time creating mathematical patterns of every conceivable shape. The same basic method of pattern formation the same mechanism of symmetry breaking governs the whole universe of organic and non-organic matter. Everything will form into ever greater complexity because everything is creating its own space-time geometry of ever greater diversity. This can explain the dynamics of evolution from simple to complex. Even in something as simple as a snowflake we have total diversity there are no two patterns of snowflakes the same. This is because the atoms of each snowflake are creating their own space-time geometry, therefore their own symmetry. Only a slight distortion in the space-time symmetry will expand out, creating the visual and mathematical patterns of our universe. In this theory, infinity is not a mathematical paradox, but an actual reality. Each individual atom creates its own infinity by collapsing the wave function into moments of time that will have a position in space. Put very simply, the light emitted by an atom now will be absorbed by another atom later on and this creates the infinity of space-time. This can explain the problem of mathematical infinities in quantum electrodynamics that can only be cancelled out in a process called renormalization. The calculations for each coupling on a Feynman diagram are infinite. In quantum atom theory these infinities represent the continuous process of the time continuum creating the infinity of space-time and therefore there is no need for renormalization. In this diagram of an atom surrounded by photon-electron couplings feedback from other atoms will create sets of infinities the reason why we can always divide infinity into sets of infinities is because of the continuous process of the wave particle function collapsing into new quantum particles. Each set of infinities will be a set of fractional self-similarities creating their own infinity of time and space. This can also explain why there is no center or outer limit to our universe. There can be no center or outer limit to infinity. Each fractional self-similarity will be governed by the law of the conservation of energy. In an isolated system, the total amount of energy remains constant and cannot be created or destroyed, although it may change form 